Hello colleagues, uh, let's proceed with deep and broad topic of building submaps. In the first part, we already covered uh, the first items marked green. Uh, now let's finish with basic um, hints and move further. Uh, important part, how to align submaps. So when you build submaps, uh, how basically do you do, do you build them? How to make sure that submaps, uh, neighboring submaps, are actually uh, matching the location? And there's a functionality which we call it oranges, and uh, which is enabled by M1, M2. So there's a button which activates this functionality. What it does? Uh, so for example, you have two beacons, two mobile beacons, one and two. And when you activate M1, M2, the system is basically enabling uh, both opinions. So uh, from submap one and submap two. And when uh, you have uh, this activated and uh, the submaps are not aligned, then instead of two mobile beacons, you will have four mobile beacons. And the alignment is super simple. You physically take it in the dashboard and move one of the submaps against another submap. And then it's aligned. It's aligned like this. And of course, you can zoom in, zoom out, uh, but it's aligned to the centimeter level. And that's it. Of course, you check it by moving of course you you must build the uh service zones and over zones um but the checking and verification that submaps are aligned is done by moving in out of uh, from one submap to another crossing their handover zone it's possible to achieve the same without this m1 m2 uh, functionality or oranges but with oranges it's much much easier and faster so effectively you have Two mobile beacons installed on whatever half a meter, one meter distance, either two uh, separate uh, tripods or one tripod with some whatever horizontal part. And then you move this part uh, along uh, the submaps and uh, put it into the handover zone and thus making the alignment. So in this particular demo, the handover zones and server zones were not built, so that was a partial mistake, <clears throat> but you put it inside the handover zone and then you align it align it until uh four images of uh mobile beacon become two then they're aligned why two because in this case if you have only one mobile beacon then you have two uh, opinions then you align but you still may have angular uh, inaccuracy with two it's like a line so if you line both of them and they have a distance of half a meter or one meter, that's sufficient and they would be aligned on the position and on the angle. So use M1, M2, it's a very, very powerful feature to make the alignment between the submaps very quick. Now let's discuss about different uh, architectures that we have. As was mentioned in the beginning, and you probably already know, we have non-inverse architecture, inverse architecture, and multi-frequency non-inverse architecture. Uh, the difference between them is very simple. And the key defining factor is very simple. Who is emitting ultrasound? In non-inverse architecture, the mobile beacon is emitting ultrasound, and the station beacons are receiving ultrasound. In all cases, the modem is a central controller, uh, you know, defining their clocks, defining their timestamps, synchronizing, getting the telemetry data, all the beacons and station and mobiles are talking to the modem only. They don't talk, talk over radio uh, between each other. They over radio talk to the modem only. But in, we are not touching that because uh, in this particular presentation, we are focusing on ultrasound. And uh, when we are discussing uh, building the submaps, it's mostly about ultrasound and ultrasound frequencies. So let's focus on that. So non-inverse architecture, mobile beacons are emitting ultrasound, station beacons are receiving ultrasound. Since super beacons, they can receive any and all ultrasound frequencies at the same time. So when you get your set or when you deploy, it's virtually doesn't matter what frequencies of um, 
super beacon you have. It's valid only for super beacons. It's not valid for beacons uh, version hardware 4.9, if you still have them. Because uh, beacons hardware version 4.9, they were analog, and they had uh, a possibility, and they have had the possibility to receive only a single frequency. So, for example, if you have 31 kilohertz beacon 4.9, then it can receive and transmit uh, only 31 kilohertz. It cannot operate with 25 kilohertz at all. Super beacons are super beacons, so this is why they are capable to transmit only their native frequency. So if you have, for example, 25 kilohertz super beacon, it can transmit only 25 kilohertz, but it can receive any 19, 22, 25, 28, 31, 34, 37, and 45. All our uh, eight ultrasound frequencies we support today. So remember about this. Inverse architecture historically uh, came later, and inverse architecture is, in terms of internal structure, significantly more complex uh, than non-inverse architecture. Why? Uh, the complexity stems from the fact that the mobile beacon is receiving ultrasound, and it must receive not a single ultrasound from station beacons, but several different ultrasound frequencies at the same time. So, uh, for example, for 3D, Submap, it must be at least four station beacons, and all four station beacons must have different ultrasound frequencies. So in, in this example, 19, 25, 31, and 37 kilohertz. It's very complex to get and receive and distinguish and filter four ultrasound frequencies at the same time. So this is why um, inverse architecture is significantly more complex in, uh, internally. And also, it puts additional requirements to understand the details uh, from the end users. For example, typical mistake to try to build inverse architecture with you know, 19, 19, 19, 19. No, it will not work because the system will not be able to distinguish between different beacons having the same ultrasound frequency. No, it is distinguishing based on the ultrasound frequency. So it means that in one submap, uh, each beacon must have different ultrasound frequencies. And with complex maps, it becomes more complex because we have only eight frequencies and those frequencies must be reused. Like in cellular networks, there is a limited number of channels and they must be reused after some time. Very similar here. Simply we have fewer frequencies, so the requirements are tougher, but it's doable. We will explain how. But remember, in inverse architecture, mobile beacon is receiving ultrasound, and in uh, non-inverse architecture, mobile beacon is transmitting ultrasound. In inverse architecture, stationary beacons are transmitting ultrasound on different frequencies. And on uh, non-inverse architecture, station beacons are receiving ultrasound. And they can be on different uh, frequencies, those uh, super beacons, because they do not transmit. It does matter and they can receive any frequency. Multi-frequency non-inverse architecture is the latest architecture that we introduced. It's still non-inverse architecture because the mobile beacon is emitting ultrasound. And the difference between non-inverse architecture and mobile, uh, sorry, and multi-frequency non-inverse architecture is that in um, multi-frequency non-inverse architecture, when you have more than one mobile beacon, they can operate on different frequencies. For example, in non-reverse architecture, if you have one uh, mobile beacon and it's whatever, 25 kilohertz, and in multi-frequency non-reverse architecture, you have one beacon, which is 25 kilohertz. There's no difference. It's the same non-reverse architecture. But when you have more than one mobile beacon, then in non-reverse architecture, both must be on 25 kilohertz. And the drawback is that you can serve only one mobile beacon at a time in non-inverse architecture because one two one two one two one two they must jump in time slots so now you are serving uh mobile beacon number one and the second time slot which is one eighth of the second for example with typical update rate of eight hertz you will be serving the second uh mobile beacon but in multi uh frequency non-inverse architecture have up to eight uh, mobile beacons served at the same time. So you have one mobile beacon on 19 kilohertz 
and uh, another mobile beacon on 25 kilohertz. They both will be meeting at the same time. They both will be getting update rate. So effectively for eight mobile beacons, the update rate per beacon for multi-frequency non-reverse architecture will be eight times higher, which is absolutely great than for non-inverse architecture. For inverse architecture, it's a different story because inverse architecture works very much like GPS. For inverse architecture, mobile beacons are receiving ultrasound and you can have 200 beacons. At the same time, receiving location updates rate uh, and calculating it, and they all will know location update at the same time. So this is why if you have hundred, if you need hundreds and hundreds, uh, mobile beacons typically it's inverse architecture. The drawback of the inverse architecture is only one. A mobile beacon is receiving ultrasound. So it means that if, for example, you have noisy objects like drones, uh, inverse architecture most likely will not work. So we do not recommend inverse architecture, at least today, <clears throat> for drones, because drones will produce very high noise. This noise is wideband noise, which is going to from acoustic and uh, audible noise to ultrasound as well, and it will limit the range of uh, inverse architecture to maybe a few meters or maybe three, five meters or something, even smaller. It depends on the drone. So inverse architecture doesn't work with uh, noisy mobile objects like drones, but it's absolutely fine for people, for robots, for forklifts, even in a very noisy environment, because it's still not so noisy as the drone 20 centimeters away. Uh, when you have not hundreds of objects, but uh, let's say eight or even 16 drones, then multi-frequency non-universe architecture is your choice. Um, in applicability to building submaps, what are those differences? Already mentioned, <clears throat> non-universe architecture may have uh, free, uh, super beacons on any frequency. So this is why we recommend you start with non-universe architecture. If you mess up, you know, you don't know all these details, you install super beacons, they will work in non-universe architecture. But in inverse architecture, no, it will not work because you must have super beacons, uh, well-specific frequencies. For example, you have 19, 19, 25. No, it will not work. If you have 19 and 25, yes, it will work. If you have 25 and 25, no, it will not work once again in inverse architecture because, you know, this basic rule is not met. It's not a complex rule, but when you are novice to the system, it's very easy to make the mistake. Uh, there's another reason, quite a few reasons. We'll discuss about them like uh, dynamic range. If you are too close to the station beacon and at the same time too far, from another station beacon. In inverse architecture, the close beacon will be overshouting. It's like if, for example, I have a mobile beacon and my station beacon is basically, you know, shouting pulses too, too loud. So it means that uh, this mobile beacon must listen at the same time uh, signal from a close, from me, I am there, one of the station beacons, and from a distant uh, beacon. And since I'm too close relative to that beacon, that beacon will not be heard because the dynamic range of distances is too high. We'll discuss a bit uh, later. Uh, so in general, if you want to deploy a basic starter set, for example, then EA or inverse architecture is almost equal uh, non-inverse architecture. But if you discuss, uh, for example, a huge warehouse, then to build a large non-inverse architecture map is about one tenth of the complexity of large inverse architecture map. Again, it's doable, not a problem, but simply you need to follow and to need to understand much deeper details with inverse architecture because it's more capable, but at the same time more demanding to you uh, as a person deploying the system. So this is why basic recommendation is, you know, lengthy explained in this step-by-step uh, -step guide, start with non-inverse architecture, basic 2D, achieve perfect tracking and then move to a bit uh, complex, like 3D, still non-inverse architecture. And then from 3D, if you wish, move to inverse architecture, 3D, etc. But move in small steps at a time. Don't try to jump to the end. So that's the key message. 
Uh, let's now discuss those samples, like examples of building submaps. Uh, there are many, many ways we will cover some of them. Uh, some of them probably will be missed. We will add them later in some additional presentations, but let's discuss in, uh, in short. So this is the most simple 2D uh, submap that we recommend you to build when you get, for example, Super MP starter set. So this is the most simple one, 2D, one mobile beacon and one modem. As I said, modem we are not uh, discussing because it's somewhere, it can be placed anywhere, it doesn't matter. Um, so two station beacons. One station beacon is on uh, one wall and uh, on the same wall another station beacon and they have the same frequency. So the same color, the same frequency. And this is a mobile beacon, that's it. Basic, perfect. It can be different frequency for non-universe architecture because they do not emit ultrasound when tracking is done. They receive ultrasound. So it's not relevant to talk about the frequency of station beacons in non-universe architecture because they're receiving. Super beacons can receive any frequency. We are not talking about beacons hardware version 4.9 because they're applicable uh, to non-universe architecture only and they are pretty mature. So when I'm talking about the beacons, keep in mind that I'm basically referring to super beacon or industrial super beacon, which is the same in terms of technology, simply more uh, protected. Uh, 3D submap is very similar to 2D, but instead of two beacons, you have four beacons. Again, these beacons in non-universe architecture can be any frequency, but they must be placed to make kind of a, a rectangle or similar. They must not place be on one line because it will be not a volume, it will be not 3D, it will be line. So effectively it would be, uh, I mean, 2, 2D um, uh, submap consisting of four beacons. It will be a mess, it will not work. So always do the volume, place on another wall. It can be on different height, it doesn't matter. You anyway must enter the height for station beacons always. Uh, for 3D, the minimum number of beacons is three, but it's too easy to have abstraction, like obstacle. And in this case, for example, this beacon uh, hardly can see. So you can see it's almost in the shadow. This beacon can see, this beacon can see, but this beacon, station beacons, is already uh, near their abstraction against the mobile beacon. So this is why we have three plus one redundancy. At least three out of four uh, must uh, be seen by the mobile beacon. In this case, the tracking will continue almost in 99%. Uh, in majority of cases, like here still, all four beacons are seen. So then system is basically choosing the best triangle. So one, two, three, one combination. One, two, three, another combination. One, two, three, third combination. There must be fourth combination. Anyway, so there are four combinations of triangles and the system is automatically choosing based on some criteria, parameters, which one is the best and using it. Sometimes it's using a combination of all those. Uh, but it's all possible only when you have redundancy. If you had three, three uh, beacons and one is blocked, that's it. You'll have no tricking because for 3D you must have three station beacons. So this is why for three we have uh, four beacons included and three plus one redundancy by default and we strongly recommend it to you. Service zones is uh, good to have when you have a single submap. Why is good to have? Because service zones define the area where the beacon will be served. If you don't define the service zone, there is always a service zone, implicit service zone, which is 30 meters from each of the beacons. So you have a huge submap anyway, but if you have a huge submap, ultrasound will travel longer. If it travels longer, then it takes uh, more time, and then the update rate will be uh, lower. Of course, regularly typically you want to have as high update rate as possible so define the server zone and it always helps uh, now let's discuss a more complex area when you have uh, several submaps in uh, non-inverse architecture as was mentioned non-inverse architecture are simpler so this is one submap you just build it in the previous case okay in this case this is one submap another submap third submap uh, how to build submaps? We have an article about this, so the links are there. So build one by one. How? Build one submap, freeze it, and even you know shut down all the beacons. You know, just 
remove them even from the network. Then build this submap. Like this submap and this submap doesn't exist. Build it as a standalone submap. Again, achieve perfect tracking. When I'm saying build submap means that you build the beacon, you build the table of distances, and uh, you proved by tracking inside the service zone of the submap, the tracking is good. So in this case, you confirmed that uh, the submap is good and it can be frozen. Freeze it and you know forget about it. Even you know uh, disable the beacon or send it to sleep. This one, this is. Uh, commonly used in this submap as well. Do this submap like all other submaps do not exist. Repeat with all the submaps you wish, and so forth. In non-universal architecture, as mentioned, there uh, the beacons can be any frequency. We do recommend to order always beacons with different frequencies, as many as you can have. Why? Because it gives you freedom. Today you deploy the non-universal architecture, but tomorrow you may change your mind. Say, oh, I love it. I want inverse architecture. That's great, but you already have the beacons which would support your inverse architecture only because of this. So this is why typically, you know, you can use whatever frequencies, but we recommend deploy like you would be deploying inverse architecture because then you can update the software and you may have already deployed inverse architecture system without much tuning or no tuning at all. Service zones is a must in this case. Why? Now imagine that this is distance of whatever 15 meters. This is distance of five meters. This is distance of another five meters. If you don't define the service zone, each beacon still have limitation of distance. You know, default limitation of distance set 30 meters. 30 meters means that this beacon will try to get the data from or the, to get their ultrasound signal from this uh, uh, beacon because it still will be below 30 meters. But that's not great because obviously it's much easier to track by these beacons. You know, distances are closer, the angle is better, everything is better. <clears throat> but this beacon will try to say, yeah, yeah, I know the distance. I know and it will report to the system. The system will have to pick up from six uh, beacons, six st station beacons, because it's more than enough. You know, if you need only two, it will, be, you know, collect the data from six, but it may collect the data from you know, further beacons, and you will have a poor results because you know longer distance. There are still more, you know, uh, more possibility to signal to become weaker or obstructed or anyway. So chances that the location from further beacon will be poorer than from the closer beacons are much higher, obviously. So this is why limit those opinions by making uh, submaps. Submaps are basically saying. Oh, sorry, submap, service zones. Uh, service zones are basically saying, this is your area of responsibility, dear submap number one. This is your area of responsibility, submap number two. This is your area of responsibility, submap number three. Kind of do not try to um, share your opinion when it's far. In normal conditions, when you have a large warehouse, you typically deploy systems like 20, 30 meters between the beacons, and it's physically not capable to listen there. But in small areas like museums or rooms, uh, it's very easy to have submaps much smaller size, like five meters, I don't know, two meters, 10 meters. And submaps may, may try uh, to you know, share these opinions, which will create a mess. So always, Use service zones. So service zones are a must. But again, in non-universal architecture, ultrasound uh, frequencies of super beacons can be any because uh, it's not relevant. Ultrasound uh, or station beacons listen to ultrasound. So what uh, ultrasound transmitting frequencies they have is simply not relevant. Um, so we were talking about in this case, three plus one redundancy. But sometimes, you remember in the beginning, we had three reasons to have submaps. One is extend range. And in this case, we're basically extending the range. So you can extend it more and more and more submaps, and then you can cover one kilometer, for example. If the modem is capable enough and have directional antennas, you can cover 500 meters that direction, 500 meters that direction, and you can cover whatever tunnel of one kilometers long. And each submap is 20, 25, 
30 meters. Okay, you can extend it further, 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 further. So that's the first reason. Second reason we already discussed, if you have rooms. In each room, you must have at least two station beacons for 2D and three or four station beacons for 3D in order to uh, cover each of the rooms. Check the placement manual. That's when you have static walls. But uh, sometimes you have uh, either this kind of static wall in the middle or mobile uh, obstructions. I don't know, people moving or forklift is moving and forklift creates a shadow. Shadow to whom? To the mobile beacon or to people around. Not a problem. So, for example, you have a room and you place two station beacons on one room or one side of the room, one wall and another side of the wall. And you have two submaps uh, facing each other. One is facing this direction and another facing this direction. And service zones are fully overlapping submaps. So we, uh, we call them fully overlapping submap, submaps. Uh, and uh, what it does, it basically, if here we were saying we would like to avoid the second opinion, in this case we say, yeah, 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 we want the second opinion. So when both uh, beacons and both submaps are seen, then both, uh, both submaps are saying, okay, I know that the location of this mobile beacon is XYZ. Another submap is saying, yeah, yeah, we know that the location of this beacon is X1. Uh, Y1, which is very, very similar. It will be almost the same spot, you know, if the submaps are aligned. But if, for example, this mobile beacon is moving a bit further, it will be in the shadow of this uh, obstacle. In this case, this submap will not be able to provide this location data. Okay, not a problem, because this submap will still have. So we intentionally do 2N redundancy, and in this case, uh, obstacles are not a problem because if one of the submap is not able to serve, another submap will serve. So that's the reason uh, for uh, using fully overlapping submaps. And there is a video. Please check it. It's very, very useful. So the same logic can be extended even further. This could be uh, this could be submaps, so it's kind of four overlapping submaps. It's also possible. It's not today supported because typically uh, 2N submap is covering 99% of cases. Uh, now let's move to the most complex area, which is inverse architecture. Again, it's more than doable if you do it step by step. If you understand the basic logics, you don't try to jump and follow this, uh, you know, understanding of the requirements, then it's very simple. But since there are a few requirements, if you miss any of those or violate any of those, uh, then it will not work. So this is why it's more complex than the non-inverse architecture. And this is why as soon as you master uh, Non-inverse architecture, move to inverse architecture. So let's start with the mistake first. The mistake is very, very simple. Station beacons are the same frequency. If they have the same frequency, it will not work because the mobile beacon is receiving ultrasound. And if two beacons are uh, transmitting the same frequency, the system will not be able to distinguish this ultrasound frequency of whatever, what was the frequency? 22 kilohertz, 22, 22. The system will not be able to distinguish from which of the beacons this 22 kilohertz frequency came. So it will not work in non -inverse, in inverse architecture. This will work because this is 22 and this is whatever frequency, different anyway. System will know, okay, I received 25, for example, it's 25 kilohertz and the distance was, I don't know, 2 meters. I received signal from 22 kilohertz and the distance was, I don't know, 7 meters. Okay, so this is my location, that's it. That, that's your mobile beacons location, done. Everything is done. So remember, the first and the most important that each uh, station beacon in the submap must have different ultrasound frequency. Now let's discuss when you have more than a single uh, submap. The same story. So one submap, another submap, third submap. The same case as with non-inverse architecture, but now inverse architecture. Uh, it's a bit more complex. Why? Because you need to, uh, first of all, provide in each separate submap frequencies different. So you see, this was 36, uh, 34 and uh, 22. This was 22 and 25. This was 25 and 45. Okay. First rule in each submap, uh, 
pair of uh, beacons have different frequencies. Net. But that's not the only one rule. Um, imagine, okay, I guess we are discussing this in this area. Imagine that you made a mistake. You see the difference? No, this is what we already touched. The same, uh, the same frequency in one of the submaps. Violation. It will not work. So this is a good one. This is not good one because one of the submaps have frequency the same. But this is basic one. Again, difficult to miss, but some people do. This is more complex one because you see each of the submaps they have different frequencies. Okay, 34, 22. Not a problem. In this submap, 22, 34. Not a problem. Will it work? No, it will not work. Why? Because in the same map, in the same time slot, you have two beacons or two submaps with the same combination of frequencies. It will not work. Because imagine if uh, this mobile beacon receives the signal. Uh, this particular case, it may even work. Uh, 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 uh. Now, okay, let's 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 guess now. It may work. It may not work because, uh, for example, it received their uh, signal. Uh, we don't know where it's placed now because we are trying to determine the location. But what we know that it time in this time slot, it received the signal from 34 kilohertz, and it was roughly I don't know four meters, for example, and it received the signal from. Uh, 22 kilohertz and it was i know 10 meters okay fine but let's now imagine uh this submap in this submap um no i think in this submap it wouldn't be possible in the system even though it was a mistake the system will try to compensate your mistake and say yeah yeah, yeah it's a mistake but the system will still be able to uh, do, uh, <coughs> to uh to find the location based on distances there's a mistake because you have two submaps with the same frequency combination but it still would be able to distinguish between this and this because uh, this combination of distances is not possible in this because the uh, you know the shape of their submap is different but let's imagine that this would be uh, here in this case it would be five meters and five meters okay but the same is possible here so also five meters and five meters in this case the system wouldn't be wouldn't be able to distinguish is this mobile beacon receiving the signal from this beacon or from this beacon from this beacon or from this so is this in this submap or in this submap so if it's for example in the middle then five and five in this case it's also five and five so system does work and their solution for this is very simple as already discussed use their ultrasound uh, pairs of different combinations there are many uh, we used to have only five frequencies it was more demanding now we have eight frequencies and it's pretty easy to achieve even for very large uh, networks to have a unique combination of frequencies so this is the mistake uh, one of these must be replaced with one of not yet used ultrasound frequencies so this is once again why we are saying get as many uh, different ultrasound frequencies as possible so you have much freedom when you build the network um what is this ah okay so uh <clears throat> in this case you do not violate yet uh you, you have a larger network and uh, uh th this is the problem that i mentioned uh, the solution is very simple you can use tdma what does it mean you use tdma it means that uh this submap and this submap doesn't leave at the same time in this case yes it's suboptimal but it will work so it means that time slot means that if for example you have eight times per second update rate and uh, this submap will leave in time slot uh, odd time slots and this will leave in even time slots 
so they will not work at the same time. So there will be no ambiguity about the location. You see, submap is exactly the same in terms of combination of frequencies, but there will be no ambiguity because at, at each moment we will know which submap is serving in odd time slot one, third, fifth, etc. This will be serving, and in even second, fourth, sixth, etc., this will be serving. So, and if uh, their mobile beacon is receiving this and these frequencies in even part, then we know that it's here and the location is here, not here, because in even this submap simply doesn't serve and the beacon, this particular beacon doesn't emit. So uh, the mobile beacon cannot hear this frequency at this time, but it's suboptimal. Why? No, because TDMA comes uh, with a drawback and the drawback is reduced update rate. Because you do not serve eight times per second this submap, but only four times per second. So yes, it's possible, uh, but it's suboptimal. If you don't employ TDMA, then it's a mistake. It will be this kind of mistake. It's simply not okay. So this is why if you use TDMA, it's suboptimal because you can still use some other frequencies. You used only five or six frequencies, uh, six beacons. You have eight uh, different frequencies, so you can use it. But with TDMA it's possible to use it still, but it's suboptimal. If you don't employ TDMA, it's not okay, it will not work, it will be a mistake, and the system will report the beacon either here or here, and they will be jumping, and there will be all kinds of mistakes. Hopefully it's clear. Uh, now let's talk about even more complex areas, which is uh, 3D inverse architecture. Again, it's complex because more beacons and more frequencies, but the logic is absolutely the same. So in each uh, 3D uh, submap, you must have four station beacons. Again, three at minimum. And sometimes if you have too severe frequency limitations or it's impossible, three is kind of OK. But we do not recommend. We always recommend to use three plus one redundancy, meaning four frequencies. Uh, but four frequencies means what? Particularly for 3D, it's very quickly becoming uh, all frequencies are used. So, for example, one, two, three, four, you used. Another submap, already six. Another submap, oops, all eight frequencies has been used in just three submaps. What to do? You must reuse the frequencies. So, for example, this frequency is already the same. Okay, this frequency is already the same. Is it a problem? No, it's not the problem. Again, first, you check that each submap has a unique combination of uh, frequencies. So this, 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 and this. Check whether any of the submaps have the same combination of frequencies. There is no such submap. Second, uh, you must not have in neighboring submaps uh, the same frequency. For example, this, uh, this whatever color must not be uh, this one. Otherwise, it will be a mistake. So check that as well. So. Uh, this is exactly why inverse architecture is a bit complex because there are many layers you need to check and it's very difficult to make a mistake if you are you know inaccurate or not deep enough uh, but otherwise as soon as you comply with those basic rules inverse architecture is not impossible it's not complex per se simply more demanding layers um, and the final requirement is that ultrasound signal is not propagating to the distance. So for example, this one, you know, more than 50 meters. Okay, the signal from this beacon will come here, but it will be already attenuated too much and it will be not heard. The signal from this ultrasound uh, beacon will come to this, but it will be attenuated because it's, you know, more than 50 meters. So it will be weak one and it will not be noticed. It will be below the noise or it will be below, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it will not harm. So when it's large submaps, large map and large submaps, this will work. For example, huge warehouse. So this is a good 3D submap or 3D map. But this one is not good. You see the distance, it was 50 meters, but now we have a smaller uh, area like, I don't know, museum. You know, many small areas and you need to place uh, many beacons and uh, the distances are much smaller, not 50 meters, but 10, 5, 15 meters. So what happens? It happens that, uh, for example, this beacon in this area. So virtually 
is the same. You see, it's the same. So there's no violation in terms of frequencies, in terms of frequency combinations, etc. It's fine. The, the first rule is met. All submaps have different combinations of frequencies. The second rule that uh, neighboring uh, beacons they don't have uh, the same ultrasound, so the system may distinguish between also met. But the third rule that the distances is large enough so the ultrasound uh, system is uh, um, is attenuated or ultrasound signal is attenuated while reaching is not met because you see you are still in this server's uh, zone so this this and this and this are serving beacons so this are uh, their service uh, area but this beacon is you know close you know whatever 10 meters away and the signal is not attenuated and this beacon and this beacon are emitting at the same time so this ultrasound signal will simply come sooner than this because it was built in such suboptimal way it will come sooner and it means that by the time when this signal comes and you basically define a server zone but kind of who cares because this ultrasound signal will propagate to this even though you say okay this is my server zone that's fine you cannot stop the ultrasound signal it means that in this area you will not listen and you will not pay attention to this but in terms of ultrasound frequency at this point it will be not possible to distinguish between this frequency or let's say frequency um, let's say uh, ultrasound signal from this beacon in this frequency and ultrasound signal from this beacon on the same frequency it's not possible even more this will come sooner than this one so the system will not work what are the solutions there are several now first of all you could place this beacon somewhere like it was before like in this area so this why placement is very important second you can change the frequencies you can align beacons differently you can move this beacon to whatever this and this and then it will emit in that direction so you can realign in different directions in order to meet all those requirements another option is of course to employ employ tdma if they confuse don't let them to live in the same time slot but as I mentioned tdma is always a solution but tdma brings uh lower update rate but the whole idea of inverse architecture is to, to have the highest update rate possible for multiple, multiple mobile beacons. But when you have very large networks, most likely you will have to use TDMA. It's only a matter of how many time slots you have. Two time slot. In normal conditions, you have only one time slot and everyone emits at the same time slot. When the map is too complex and some maps there are too many and you cannot avoid it, you, you, know, you, you tried all the options, impossible. Okay, TDMA 2 means that two time slot one two one two one two sometimes when it's too complex two small sub maps you may have three slots even four slots but in this case you update per uh well, beacon will drop four times which is still okay in many cases for example you have eight hertz update rate per system to the may uh four means that per beacon it will be uh two hertz which is sufficient for people tracking for majority but again everything which uh, brings additional complication brings additional you know chances for something will mismatch something will work uh, because your server zone uh, handover zone must be l longer because the update rate is smaller and if your object is moving too fast anyway so it, it brings some additional complexities which you need to take care of so this is why tdma is always a solution and this is why using tdma and server zone and 8 hertz you can build as large as large maps as you wish because after 50 meters you can reuse the same frequencies but uh, um, employ tdma as a last resort because it's not a free cheese um, now about the dynamic range of distances i already briefly mentioned it what is this uh inverse architecture relies on a mobile beacon receiving two or more ultrasound frequencies at the same time of course it's a digital technology etc uh, but still you as a mobile beacon must receive two pretty close ultrasound frequencies for example 22 and 25 kilohertz just three kilohertz difference you must receive two of them at the same time and when there uh, you are very close to one of the station beacons and another station beacons is far 
it's very difficult or even impossible to do. So again, it depends on many parameters, but our basic rule of recommendation is the following. If you have uh, 19 and 25, 25 to 31, so six kilograms difference, then dynamic uh, range of differences or distance ratio is one to 10. So for example, if you have the maximum distance of 20 meters, then the closest you can be to the closest beacon is two meters. If you have 30 meters, then the closest would be three meters. So it's kind of rule of thumb. It depends on many other parameters, but kind of rule of thumb is uh, one to 10. If you have eight frequencies, not five, but eight frequencies, in this case, it's more demanding because it's very, very close. And our recommendation is one to three, which is already pretty limiting, uh, but in reality, not really. Why? Because typically you place the beacons on the height, like five meters. So imagine if you place the beacon on five meters and you track people, well, let's say, on two meters. So the very minimum distance between their person, it would be three meters. And in this case, even one to three, it's like 10 meters on the distance. So, uh, but again, it's not a um, uh, rule of uh, kind of thumb. It's, um, oh, no, it's not science, it's more than a rule of thumb. So it means that in practice, if you put, for example, the beacon on six meters or 10 meters, in this case, the minimum distance would be seven and the maximum distance would be 21 meters, which is okay. In this case, it's typical 20 meters inside the warehouse. So place it. Uh, it may be less than, so it may be one to four, one to five. It depends. Depends on the frequency, depends on the external noise, and depends on many things. So it's more, uh, as a, again, as a guidance. And remember to you, so you cannot come with the mobile beacon just next to the station beacons, because station beacon will be emitting sound and it will be basically over overloading uh, the microphone and overloading the filters. And those filters would be able to, you know, receive this signal, which is close, but at the same time won't be able to distinguish uh, the signal from their uh, father beacon if the frequencies are very, very similar. So remember about this. It's probably the last one important, not so critical, uh, but it also depends on uh, what you know specific application you have. TDMA. We already mentioned about TDMA. So TDMA is the last resort. Is uh, obviously used in uh, complex maps. So, for example, like this one we already discussed. See, this submap and this submap intentionally have the same frequency. For example, you have a huge, 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 huge map, and at some sort, at some time, you will have a combination of frequencies the same. So, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, intentionally. So the system. Uh, without in, and the system has many layers like history, for example, like this has this shape, this has this shape, uh, but the system still may confuse. So the first rule, uh, beacons inside the submap must have different combination of frequencies. So this first rule is not met. So do not rely on other uh, rules in order for the system not to be confused. So, and as soon as I have this combination, the recommended way is to employ TDMA. So TDMA stands for time division multiple access. So this submap and this submap do not live in the same time slot. They are living in different time slot. So this is um, in different time slots, what it does. So this is configuration in my odd slots. Slot one, slot three, slot five. And this is my configuration in second slot, in fourth slot and fifth slot. And it's all the time jumps between them. And in this case, there is no problem because you see there is no similar configuration and there is no similar configuration. But look, this is my mobile beacon. So my, my, my mobile beacon will not be served during this time because there is no submap in this area. So it means that the update rate for my mobile beacon will actually drop to one uh, to fifty percent, to one half of my regular update rate. If my if my regular update rate is around eight hertz, so my effective update rate per mobile beacon will be only four hertz in this con uh, configuration. But TDMA is extremely powerful feature and employing multiple frequencies and building properly and employing TDMA can build as large maps as you wish. 
Uh, now about their uh, service zones. We already mentioned this, but this is, uh, I'll say, more specific. For example, why we strongly recommend to use the service zone even for single uh, submaps. Um, how the system works? The system, anyway, has to listen to some time. What time? It's default limitation of distance, which is 30 meters. So it will listen to 30 meters divided by speed of sound, which is around 340 meters per second. So it will listen about 100 milliseconds. So if it listens to 100 milliseconds, you will not be able, even in theory, to have update rate more than, let's say, eight, uh, more than 10 hertz. In practice, we need a time for radio, for calculation, for filtering, etc., etc. So update rate will be not eight, uh, not 10 hertz, but like five hertz or six hertz, if you have the full uh, distance. But if your sub map is only, I don't know, five by five meters, what's the point to have 30 meters? Build it five by five specify the service zone in this case you're basically saying this is your area of responsibility and do not listen more than five divided by 340 meters so don't listen more than one whatever 16 millisecond there's no point because all other it will be not our signal and in this case you can increase your update rate significantly like times two three times easily simply because you specify the service zone so it's very useful and always use a service zone when you build uh, even a single submap because it will increase your update rate so this is a good service zone and this is bad service zone because it's too large there's no point because this is your room for example um, there are many special cases 1d submap if you have a long corridor or a long tunnel sometimes you don't need z you don't need why you need only along the route that's that's good because we typically say the maximum distance of uh, 1d sub map or uh, let's say uh, of sub map is 30 meters but for 1d you can employ the horn with horn you can have up to 100 meters so you can have very very long uh sub map if you install one horn on one side another horn on another side whatever 10 meters uh overlapping so you effectively can cover up to 200 meters tunnel with only two uh, station beacons. It's a very strong thing. Vertical 2D. You know, uh, for example, you have uh, pilots. You don't care uh, so much uh, about Z per se or this kind of. So in case, in this case, your XY, which is typically horizontal, becomes vertical because you care where you put their palette. So your X would be this and Y would be instead of Z. So this is vertical 2D submap. You don't care about this height because you care where you put uh, your uh, palette. Same, for example, if you want to draw this paint on your huge wall. So you have 2D, but this 2D is vertical. So this is vertical 2D. It's not complex, so you can build it, but a special case. Uh, there is even video uh, where we are showing how to combine 1D, 2D, 3D, and vertical 2D in the same submap. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Of course, there will be some kind of, uh, you know, not a jump, but kind of sort of distortion when the, the mobile dickens is moving from 1D to 2D, from 2D to 3D, from 3D back to vertical 2D, some sort of uh, distortion. But it will depend on particular case, on how well you align the maps, uh, etc. But it's possible to have different uh, dimensions or submaps of different dimensions in the same map. Precise that is a special case for drones. Uh, for example, sometimes when the drone is flying inside the building, inside the hangar, and then flies away. So, and you want to use the system, for example, to land the drone. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Uh, but you have two options. One option is that you install the station beacons on the floor and uh, your landing pad for the drone is in the middle. Will it work? It will work perfectly for X, Y, but for Z in this floor area, it will not work. Again, we have a specific video, check it. We have a specific uh, description in the placement manual why the problem is. Um, there is also another video about too wide and too narrow. Check that. 
So in this particular case, it's too wide. So the z will be imprecise, xy will be precise. Uh, how to avoid it? Use precise z configuration. We'll have four beacons on the floor and two beacons on some height. In this case, when it's low, it will be using these four beacons, one, 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 so four beacons for z only. And these four beacons will be, using, will be used for xy. In this case, you will have precise xy from one submap and uh, precise also xy, but for this vertical 3D submap, it will be xy, uh, but for this beacon, it will be z. So it, it, this data will be taken and combined with this. So you will have z from this submap and xy from this submap. So, but you need six beacons. How to avoid it? It's very simple. Place the station beacons on the ceiling. But in this case, you must not fly above the ceiling because with uh, the same story as this crossing line connecting um, beacons in 2D, you must not cross the plane connecting uh, beacons in 3D, because otherwise the uh, system will not be able to distinguish uh, between two different 3D points with four uh, beacons only. So it means that if you fly the drones only inside and you want to build it and as simple as possible, place them on the ceiling and fly them from their uh, uh, from the floor to their ceiling, but not next to the ceiling. You know, leave some distance so it will be still not too wide over there. Um, the few examples. So similarly, we discussed the theory, but there are some practical examples. For example, this particular uh, robot is moving inside the warehouse or assembly plant and how it was built. How many submaps? why, what the frequencies, the real performance, etc. And another example uh, for people tricking. So a huge, no, not so huge, but nevertheless a factory, a real life factory, how many beacons, why they are placed on their, uh, where they are placed, how many submaps effectively you, you need it. It's a very noisy environment. So like real, real life uh, examples. So uh, as a summary, start with non-inverse architecture. It's a very simple one. Uh, it's uh, difficult to make mistakes, start with it and increase uh, one step at a time, the complexity. In this case, you know, from 2D to 3D, from 2D, for example, non-inverse architecture to inverse architecture. This way you can build even huge inverse architecture maps consisting of multiple submaps, but don't jump to the end, you know, increase one by one. Uh, maps can be virtually any size. We already showed how it's, it can be done. Uh, obey those rules and you can, you know, build and beep and build as many as you wish. So today we support 250 submaps in each map. If you need more, it's also possible. Supermap is there. Just let us know by uh, writing to info at Uh Thank you very much. We hope that you will be able to build uh, submaps and maps properly. Thank you.